Hey, it's Lucky. I've been on quite the adventure lately. I've been trying to make a nature scene in Godot and trying to get the workflow down efficiently. Uh, what you're seeing now is the final product of two days of tinkering around. And I'll show you where I started. Uh, first off, I wanted to make these biomes. So I just created this little demo scene with two planes making a desert biome and a forest biome. But I quickly find out that placing assets manually and even creating the assets manually is just a lot of work and not very efficient. So I quickly started looking around for uh, add-ons or assets that could help me. And I found this amazing add-on. That's why I'm making this video to share this with you guys. Uh, Proton Scatter can be used to scatter assets around a scene uh, within shapes and it also allows for negative shapes. Uh, I'll explain what that means in a second. But yeah, uh, the first demo took me like two hours to put together and this demo was like five minutes and it looks amazing. And the best part about this add-on is that it comes with a bunch of assets that you can already use, like the grass and the big trees you see in the background. They just come with the add-on so you don't need to look for assets yourself, which is amazing because looking for assets can be very cumbersome. Now the center tree is an asset I found on Sketchfab. I'll share the artist in the description. He has a lot of amazing models which are low poly and good looking. Uh, they're great for using in scenes like this. I think these scenes are a lot of fun to build. It's a lot of tinkering and just finding proportions between grass and rocks and trees. And it can be fun to look at. I love projects that get visual quick. So, let me show you how you set this up. First, we're gonna collect some assets. I'm gonna uh, grab a quick texture of Polyhaven. That's polyhaven.com, will be in the description as well. I'm just gonna go to assets and textures. I'm gonna search for grass. I'm gonna be using this coast sand rock texture. So let's download this one. Uh, we're gonna select the zip format because uh, it's easiest and I'm just gonna do 1K because we don't need a really high res texture. It's gonna be covered up by vegetation anyway. So while that is downloading, let's grab just one beautiful model to put in the center of the scene to show off. And this guy, Evolved UK, I'll also link his Sketchfab in the description, has a lot of great free uh, vegetation models and tree models. And I'm just gonna grab this uh, maple tree. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, they're quite high poly, but they're worth it. They're very beautiful. So we'll download this 3D model. I'm gonna draw out the GLB version, just because this has the textures applied. I find this is the easiest to use in Godot. Next, the add-on, it's Proton Scatter is the name. It's really great. You can see a little demo here on different height maps. I'm gonna show you how it all works. So I'll leave this as a link as well in the description. Just gonna have to download this. All right, let's unpack all these assets. So I'll open the texture and I'll open the scatter add-on. And I'm gonna create a imports folder. Um, the add-on, the scatter add-on has to be in a folder called add-ons. You can see it's already there. So all you have to do is just drag this into the import folder and I'm gonna create three folders or two folders, I'm sorry. One textures and one models. And then in the textures, I'm gonna create a new folder, call it grass. I know the texture isn't grass, but it's just for organization. And I'm gonna drag and drop these three textures in there. And then last in the models, folder I'm gonna drop the maple tree as you can see textures applied looks good all right let's set up a project in Godot we can close everything else out create a new project drop it in my Godot 4 folder mm, yep. okay. 
Make sure you put it in an empty folder, doesn't matter what it's called. Just create an edit. Now the first thing you're going to do is uh, import all the assets we just collected. So I'm just going to open up the import folder and drag and drop everything inside the file system. It's going to take a little while to import. So now we got everything. There's going to be an error. Uh, yeah, I keep getting this error saying it can't open the blend file because this scatter add-on has a blend file inside its uh, demo assets folder. There's a source.blend. You can just delete this. It's just for reference or if you want to update the models that came with the add-on, but we don't need it. So just delete it so we can stop getting this error every time the project refreshes. I'm not sure why this error is happening. I do have uh, Blender set as my external program, but for some reason it's just not picking up. But this is an easy fix. So let's set up a little scene. I'm just gonna go in the top left, creating a 3D scene, calling this world, right clicking it, add child node, CSG box. This just creates a box uh, which has easy collisions. And the collisions are important here because the scatter add-on places all the grass and the tree tiles on a collision box. So we're gonna have to enable this and we'll create a little forest from 30 meters by 30 meters. Now let's hold down control and shift and drag this box down so we can see the origin of the world. It's just nice for the reference lines. Let's save this scene as main. Now I'm going to apply my grass texture to the ground floor. I'm actually going to create this texture as a separate resource. This is just so it's easy to manipulate later. So we'll create a new folder in our file system. Call the materials. In here I'm going to create a new resource. I'm going to create a standard material right here. You can just search for standard material and I'm going to call it grass. Now I'm just going to drag and drop this grass material onto the box. It's still white, but it's just so we can preview what we're doing. All right, so let's go into the albedo on the right side. This is the color of the texture and we're going to uh, quick load and we're going to find that texture that we imported from Polyhaven. And this is where a nice file system comes in handy because we can easily find texture, grass, diffuse is the one we need. Open it up and you can see we got our texture. Next thing we're going to set up is the roughness. Just open up the roughness and choose the texture. Quick load and again, find it in your file system. You can also search for it, but I find scrolling is easier. You can see we have a roughness 1K open it up and this uh, is a gray texture so in the channel below we're gonna have to select gray all right the last thing we're gonna do is the normal map so just open up normal map enable it in the texture quick loads and again scrolling down finding our normal map and now you can see it gets a little bit of depth it's best shown here in the top you can drag around the texture you can see the shadow is actually catching some of the detail of the texture. Now this plane of uh, grass is one meter by one meter, but our floor is 30 by 30. We could scale up the texture, but there's an easier solution and it's called triplanar. This takes the size of the object and automatically scales the texture to it. So in UV1, you can enable triplanar. Now what you're gonna see is the texture repeating a lot but that is not going to be very visible when we're uh, adding the grass to the scene, which we're going to do next. And this is where the fun begins. So I'm quickly going to rename this box to floor by just double clicking it in the hierarchy. And then we're going to enable the add-on. For this, we're going to go into project, project settings, and on the top go to plugins. And, should see <coughs> and you should see the proton scatter add-on. Enable this and close it. So now with our scatter add-on enabled, we're just gonna right click the world, 
add child node and search for scatter and we're going to add this proton scatter now you can see we already have a uh, cube scattering i mean it already looks so good for some reason just scattering objects makes the scene so interesting but anyway let me walk you through the add-on so you're gonna have your proton scatter parent object and within here you're gonna have all your items so this is just rocks but you can just duplicate this to add trees bushes tree everything you want and then you're gonna have shapes this is where they're gonna be scattered so right now we just have this sphere and you can add multiple shapes and you can even add negative shapes and what i mean by that is i'll just click the scatter shape and Control d and enable negative on the top and now you can see we can create complex shapes of scattering with negative space and positive space. All right, let's remove the second shape and let's set up our bushes, trees, and rocks. So we're gonna be using three scatter items. Uh, so I'm just gonna control D the scatter item three times. And the first one is gonna be the bushes. This one comes with the proton scatter add-on. So just when you click on path, right here, path and the little folder, uh, you're going to go into their assets folder and we're just going to select bush now we got these pretty bushes then for the second one we're going to use uh, small rocks so again clicking on the second scatter item path clicking the little folder selecting small rocks now we also got some rocks in there and for the third one we're going to use trees so i'm going to use this pine tree now let me run you through the options of this uh, scatter item. The proportion is going to be how much there is uh, relative to the other ones. So we're going to maybe want a little less trees. So set this one to 20. You can see now it's relatively less. And uh, here in the source options, I find that these ones don't really work. They ignore position, rotation and scale. But the scale multiplier definitely works and we're going to need it here. So we'll just set this to 2 to make these trees a little bigger. I'm just gonna set it to tree. Uh, and then I'm also gonna want a little less rocks. So I'm going to the second one and also set this to two, one, you know, maybe 10. And then for the bushes, we're just gonna set it to something like 70. Should be fine. For some reason, the trees just disappeared. You might have to mess with these proportions a little bit. Let's go 25, yeah, that's too much. 15, that's too much. 10, that's fine. You can see the trees are a bit wonky and that's because the random rotation is set to high. And this is actually inside the properties of the parent scatter. So this one is gonna be in control of uh, the sizing, the randomness and the positioning of all its scatter items. So you don't have to set them manually per item. So I'm going to go into the uh, random transform. You can see the randomness on the X and the Z axis are 20. It's a little too much for me. I'm going to change it to 10. Maybe even five. Next, I'm going to scale up this scatter area. So in the scatter shape, I'm actually going to make it a cube. So you can go into the shape and a drop down and I'm going to select a box. And in here, I'm going to set it to 30 by 30, just like this size of our plane. And now you can see it's looking quite barren. So we'll up the amount, which you can do in the create inside the top modifier. Let's just add a zero. And now we got a little force demo. Now to test this, I'm going to uh, add in the world environment and the sun. You can really easily do this by clicking the three dots on the top, adding the sun to the scene and adding the environment to the scene. And now let's quickly add a camera. And run it and select the current scene.
Now you can see we just used one ground texture for this and the rest is all uh, packaged assets and we're already getting a nice forest scene. I'm gonna touch it up a little bit and add our maple tree for a little bit of effect. And I'm gonna set up the negative space in the center. I'll show you how I do this. I'm gonna click the scatter shape, hit Control D, and we're gonna go for a, a sphere shape. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. Um, and select negative, of course, to keep it clear. And now we can drop our own asset here in the middle. So I'm gonna go into my models folder, just drag and drop my maple tree in the center here. Now the maple tree is looking a little underwhelming, so I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. And then let's scale this negative space, and this is, where the, this is where the tinkering begins. You can start really building out your scenes. Of course, if you're gonna make a real scene, you wanna use a custom floor, not just a flat plane. I'm just gonna tinker around a little bit with the scene and I'll show you the final product. here to the scene is in skybox you can download hdri textures from polyhaven and use them as skyboxes you can just go to assets hdris and find one you like and just download it as a hdri drag it into your project and then here on the top in world environment you can uh, set the sky it's almost the top option to a panoramic image and then click your sky texture it's really easy uh, in order to view the sky texture nicely, we're gonna turn down the volumetric fog, sky effect, just dropping it down to zero. Now we got a nice blue sky above our scene. So I'm just gonna run this. I'm just gonna load in the assets, and I created this nice path using negative space for maple tree in the center. Some nice bushes waving in the wind. Now if you want to build a true forest scene, you're gonna probably want to build some custom terrain. I could make a tutorial on this next, but how I would tackle it is just building it out in Blender, not using any of the terrain add-ons. I had a really hard time with those uh, from my other forest demo. But yeah, be sure to check out this scatter add-on. I mean, the included models are great. You can have a forest in like 5 seconds in any game you want. It's very quick to set up, and I think that's one of the most important things in game development is actually getting things done and not just sitting around thinking about how you're going to tackle stuff and how problematic it's going to be. Just get in there, play some stuff around, get inspired and make some games. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I got a community post up uh, about my next video. It's going to be quite a fun one. So consider a subscription and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.